Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Greetings, this is Holly Hood, and today's message is uh, Illuminati 101. It's actually a series, and this is uh, the part one of ten. Uh, I'm going to set it off with the Young Money Illuminati pawns. Um, stay with me, I'll be right with you. The brick. You gotta find a place to meet. You better bring your meat, because them villains ain't sweet. You better let your chick drive to get them and follow that brick. So who, um, everyone wants to know the who, what, and where, and why aspect of things. I'm going to start with the who, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that my hip-hop Illuminati exposés are not from the perspective of a fan or a theorist, but it is indeed from someone who worked in this demonic entertainment industry for 25 years. Um, while you are tuned in, I will expose some of the artists that I nursed through the game. I um, expose those connected to and working for the Illuminati by name. And for those of you who think I'm just selling books, don't buy the book. Follow this video series for free. The game is to be told, not sold. And you can listen to my radio interview at the Hip Hop Illum uh, Illuminati blog spot dot com for free before I die people will indeed know that this was not a game uh, Job 34 31 through 33 says for has anyone said to God I have borne chastening I will offend no more teach me what I do not see if I have done iniquity I will do no more should he repay it according to your terms just because you disavow it you must choose and not I and therefore speak what you know so what? What do I know? Well, I know that Cash Money is one of the biggest, biggest labels in the game right now. The label skyrocketed, skyrocketed to the top of the charts as a direct result of Big Timers, who was an American rap duo active from 1997 to 2005. They were hailing out of one of the poorest areas of New Orleans, Louisiana, and the PJs, for that matter, uh, Magnolia Projects and a few others, uh, we have this in common, seeing as I come by way of Jefferson Houses, which is a project in East Harlem. Um, former gangbangers, Cash Money consisted of Cash Money Records co-founder Baby and former Cash Money in-house producer Manny Fresh. Baby, Baby later changed his name, his stage name, to Birdman after the group was dissolved. The Big Timers released their debut album, in 1998 entitled How You Love That and a remix version of their debut album How You Love That Volume 2 which gave them an abundant amount of publicity in addition to an abundant amount of money. Afterwards, they uh, recorded their first platinum selling album in 2000 entitled I Got That Work and the lead single from I Got That Work, number one stunner, which actually was my track back in the day, peaked at number, four, uh, number 24 on the Billboard Hot uh, R&B Hip Hop Singles and Tracks. The group later reunited again in 2003 for their final album entitled, entitled Big Money Heavyweight. Why? Well, when the Holy Spirit set upon me to expose this industry in which I had too made so much money off of, I did not want the assignment. It actually took me three years to finish a 152 page book because I feared the repercussions of going up against these devils. I am a Christian and I will not lie. I take my walk up very seriously, and although I may have a few strongholds that I constantly battle, lying is not one of them. A true G, my mission is not about me, far be it. It's more about honor, pride, faith in God, and the hope for a decent tomorrow. Back in the day, hustlers took care of their hood. Uh, young ballers today rarely look back to where they came from. One reason we are alive in what is called the age of the new world order is because today the old world order has been corrupted and now money is God instead of God being God and uh, things that were once considered uh, bad are now considered good.
G to G in my own way. I helped corrupt hip hop. I was all in the mix during the 80s when thugs and hustlers actually ruled the game and the hood. Dudes like my homies, the Furtado brothers, they were a drug, uh, Queen's drug crew and they were on par with Fat Cat and Supreme. Uh, they were called Kings. If you see the Furtado brothers documentary, King of Kings, which was created in 2005, it'll tell you their story. Uh, that's when uh, the Hustlers were the hood stars and rappers were our fans. Um, if you notice to the left, there I am during the height of my um, my drug dealing days in Harlem. And I was also uh, managing people on the side. And I am there at a VIP event for the movie House Party with, um, at the time, they were top uh, selling artists, uh, Kid and Play. So we were all in the mix during that time. I was one of a small group of elite uh, women in the game um, and female hustlers in particular were the exception, not the rule. Um, we had respect women and females like uh, myself, Sylvia Rome, Monica Lynch, Vivian Scott, etc. had respect from all sides of the game. and. Me, myself, uh, personally, after failing as an artist, I sold drugs while I managed other up-and-coming rappers on the side. By the time I began rapping legendary acts like Main Source, Carolus One, and Mad Lion, I couldn't just walk away from the streets because I was already knee-deep in the game. By the time I made Tupac's movie, Thug Immortal, I was firmly embedded with an industry, within an industry that would make me the Illuminati poster child. Um, in the 90s is when the Illuminati um, really became interested in hip hop because it was during that time when it was making, it began to show a profit. It was making a lot of money and the Illuminati, their interest has been and always will be in controlling the money. So anything that shows a money potential will immediately pique the interest of those who run the game. It was also during this time that the Illuminati police force, which is the feds, um, the federal government, had formed a hip-hop police as a result of the Biggie and Pac murders. The feds started connecting dots between hip-hop and the streets, and it would not be long before record companies would be tied to some very serious criminal activity. I was smack dab in the middle of a shady business whereby my faults had now become virtues, and it would only be a matter of time before all the pawns would be cleared off the board. And I uh, was one of them. Make sure the people not with them. Don't bring it nowhere around your house. Cause you don't want that heat pepper nowhere around your house. See how it come back before you saw it. And if it comes short, bring back everything you bought. Having been... Um, arrested and, and sent to prison for 10 years. When I came home, I um, was treated like a, um, a homecoming hero when in fact the only thing I had done was um, contribute to the demise of my people in my criminal drug activities. Here is a picture of me on stage with the Furtado brothers and my boys, a group I represented, uh, Brooklyn Goon Squad and this was actually only a few days after I, I had actually come home and my boys had decided to throw me a surprise party with Lance and Todd. Uh, two days later, I would actually meet up with cash money for the first time. Uh, getting in where I fit in, my first meeting with Cash Money was at BET's 106 and Park, and this was during the time when it was still being filmed on 106th Street and Park Avenue in East Harlem. Somebody had caught me with a backstage pass, and I was going to make good use of it. I was surprised that BET had assigned Fruit of Islam security, but when I saw all the groupies with no credentials, I understood. I had come home from prison to an age of the video vixen. What we used to call a fly girl back in the day was now a video vixen. I wasn't a girl anymore, but that didn't stop me from still being a fly. I was now a fly woman, albeit older. So I put in some extra effort, flashed my biggest smile and my backstage pass, and I was in. When I got to the VIP, Manny Fresh was the only one who was not acting thirsty, um, but everybody looked like new money. After the show, I got invited to their hotel suites down at the Royalton. I didn't stay because, like most spoilers, they considered women the spoils of war. 
without question cash money were gentlemen but trust and believe they were also definitely thugs uh, Deuteronomy 1 uh, 17 says do not be afraid of any man for judgment belongs to God and as a matter of fact by the next time I had seen cash money they were now heavyweights New money. Well, Matthew 15, 11 had warned of these times, not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of his mouth. That's what defiles a man. So cash money had went from poor kids from the PJs performing prosperity rap, talking about material things, to rhyming corporate billboards. And everywhere we went, bling, bling, opened the floodgates to the doors that allowed corporate America to infiltrate hip hop and indoctrinate a whole new generation of consumers. Young people started buying everything that hip hop sold. Major corporations started using hip hop in their ad com campaigns. Companies who never before would have considered hip hop, like Nike, McDonald's, and AT&T, had hip hop advertisement. Poor kids everywhere were keeping up with the trend by any means necessary, and those who couldn't afford it stole it. Kids in the hoods were dying over sneakers. Artists like Cash Money lived up to their name, promoting excess, and not unlike Africans of the past, they helped enslaved entire generations of our brethren through trickery and deceit in return for trinkets and short-lived power. The youth were being corrupted on a massive scale with massive brainwashing by the very stars that they idolized, loved, and all and loved, and all the while these stars got richer. From cash money to young money between 2001 and 2003, cash money sold 7 million albums in 2006 on a smack DVD entitled The Album of Volume 1. Manny Fresh said, I left cash money because of money. Scratch moolah. I move on. If something's not right, I had to do my thing because it wasn't right. I still holla at everyone. I still get along with them dudes. I still look at them like brothers. I wasn't raised like that. It's just a growing up thing and I had to move on. And those are the words of Manny Fresh describing why it was time for him to move on. Um, he didn't move on right away though. There were certain uh, spoils of war that he did enjoy before he left on, uh, before he moved on and as a result, um, as with everything, uh, when you deal with the enemy, there is indeed a price to pay. So what was the price of fame? Well, Matthew 7.13 warns us to enter through the narrow gate because the gate to hell is indeed wide and well-traveled. In 2007, former hot boy Lil Wayne was named president of Cash Money Records and CEO of Young Money Entertainment, giving the rapper full creative control over all releases under the two labels. Later that same year, however, Lil Wayne stepped down as the president to focus on his career and his album at the time, which was the Carter Three. That same year, 2007, Manny Fresh's sister, Angela Bryant, was shot and killed in her New Orleans home. The 42-year-old mother's two young children were present but not physically harmed. In 2008, rumors circulated on the web that little Wayne's 8-year-old daughter, Regine, was killed in a car accident. My industry sources tell me that this was a veiled Illuminati threat to little Wayne to man up and accept the offer of presidency of Cash Money Records. It must have worked because that very same year, little Wayne re-signed with Cash Money, ensuring that the label would indeed produce his next few albums. As part of that negotiation, little Wayne once again became president of Cash Money Records and CEO of Young Money Entertainment, same as it ever was. Stunned. 
nothing like my daddy. Well, 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Wayne says in his hit right above it, The game ain't sweet, but the money makes you forgive it. Just because an entertainer has lost his way does not mean he has lost all hope of salvation. As long as there is life, there is hope, if nothing else. As we aim for success in this life, we must likewise consider the circumstances and the consequences uh, Luke 17, 1 through 4, and he said to his disciples, temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come, and that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. So although, um, and that thus ends that quote, and although um, we as an adult may not, may or may not be easily influenced by images that we see um, and words that we hear, there are little ones who are listening also to this music and to the lyrics of the songs who can and are definitely in some cases influenced by them. So woe be to you entertainers who are putting out filth that is um, taken in by these little minds and as a result creates in them a type of brainwashing which is demonic and of the devil. Um, as always, in closing, I wish to offer a small prayer. Father God, um, help the young people today be able to discern between the lyrics that are unedifying and not of you, Father God. Let them to see that it is all part of the overall Illuminati plan to corrupt our youth. Um, the one thing that the government will never run out of money for, and that is the prison system and those young people who cannot afford this corporate garbage that's being sold to them on a daily basis, have resorted to other um, ways and means of getting money, Father God, which definitely will lead them down to the paths of hell. Uh, Father God, when I accepted this assignment, I asked you to use me in any way. And as always, I thank you for the ability to create these sermons. And as always, the glory is not mine, Father God, but it is indeed yours. And I thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. May those who um, can and will be um, blessed and edified through these teachings. Stay tuned. I will be uh, coming up shortly with part two of this series where I will discuss Beyonce, Beyonce and Jay-Z. Uh, the enemy is a liar, tries to stumble me up, but I will not fail. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Never ever let the money baby turn me out.